Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and it is part two of the needle felted landscape. So um, really looking forward to the landscape coming alive. I've seen amazing um, sort of work in progress pictures that you've been sharing on Everyone A Maker on our Facebook page. Do share away, share away on Instagram. Our handle is um, at the makers with two S's. And then of course we are on Facebook, um, themakers.co.uk. That is our, our um, Facebook handle, even though it looks like a web address. And uh, we do have a group called Everyone A Maker. So come and join us and uh, show us your um, landscape picture work in progress or when it's finished, of course. And as I'm going to finish the um, this, this one, um, the background uh, today. I know you. I gave you that as a homework, but I thought in case anybody is a little bit behind, you don't need to panic. I am also a little bit behind, so I'm going to fill in that last bit of the front here, and then we're going to start adding details, which is um, going to be very exciting because that brings the whole um, picture to life. Let's have a quick look who is here today, and then I'll tell you um, what is up for grubs to win and um, what you have to do to win it. So just give me a minute. I'm just going to check um, and say hello to um, people who are here. We've got Ashley. Hello, Ashley. Sandra and um, Awkward Prawn um, from ooh, from the Cumbrian Mountains. Well, you've got the, land, the landscape right outside your front doorstep, and you can uh, probably just sit by the window and copy it all. Karen is there and another Karen. Hello Steffi, I've got a day off today so nice to be able to join during the day instead of having to wait patiently till Thursday. Oh that's so nice. Hi Jude, hi Jan, hi Jane um, and of course we've got um, Alicia here today supporting us. Um, Emma is working on other things right now. Um, we've got Vampire Venom and Rachel with Daniel. Hello both. Um, Diana is there. Um, as I said, Alicia is, he is here helping um, with all the links and um, anything that you might need to tell me, she'll whisper into my ear. Eva is there. Um, uh, Margaret is there. Um, Claire, Angie, Joe, um, Merlington's Donna, Marion, and I think that's it at the moment. Um, Yes, I think so. Remember to give us the thumbs up. That would be amazing. Remember, you can watch this anytime, but we're also replaying this particular one. So today is the 13th of April 2021, and we're replaying this on Facebook at 7 p.m. on um, uh, the 15th of April. Sorry, I had a, a temporary glitch. And of course, there's a part three to this as well, which will be next week on the 20th of April at 1 p.m. on YouTube and then two days later in the evening at 7 p.m. on Facebook again. And today's prize um, is you can win yourself a mixed bag of dragon and fairy mix. This is great for landscape pictures. Half your pictures done if you have to, those two. And it's a total of 50 gram, the two colors together. And we would like you um, to tell us if you were walk walking in a beautiful landscape, who would you like to bump into and why? So remember this um, competition is completely impartial. We um, do random picks of the people um, who have commented. So all you need to do is, is comment and the same goes for the um, Facebook one on Thursday. It will obviously be a different person that we're picking and I, I'm not going to announce that because I can't look into the future just yet. But the question is, if you were walking in a beautiful landscape, who would you like to bump into and why? And um, um, just leave a comment and tell us the answer to that, whatever you think, and you can win yourself a 50 gram of dragon and fairy mixed bats. Um, that's 50 grams in total. Right, let's um, crack on with, um, with our landscape picture. Now, what I will be covering today is, um, is adding details into the picture, um, which could be like a tree or a fence um, or maybe a structural building. I will show you how you, um, you can add flowers. I will show you how you can make poppies. So um, this picture doesn't follow any particular pattern. It is a random, um, completely designed in the moment. And that, that is what the whole live stream is about. You're designing your own. It's needle felted onto our um, wool viscous felt. So you can, if you want to buy that, you can buy that from our website. It I'm um, using um, the light blue, but I can highly recommend the custard cream and the, um, I think we call it apple green. 
Um, so paler colors work better um, because a little bit of it can shine through that adds sort of to the 3D-ness. Um, you can also um, uh, use tweed, you can use hessian, you can use um, a cotton fabric. So there are lots of other things that you can use to needle felt onto. Right, let's have a look. Um, overhead um, and what I've done is it's completely a random design as I said so you've got your um, you've got your mountain in the background there's another one slightly for further forward and then the um, the fields or the valley or the the hillside whatever you want to call it uh, leading down to the flatter bit here there's another hump there is um, is 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 uh, is another part so do watch part one if you want to know how this has been done all you need is and I'm using wool um, I'm using wool bats. You can also use wool tops, but for this particular design, I'm using wool bats because I like it that it looks like the um, stubbing of a of a brush rather than the stroke of a brush. So it is a little bit like painting with wool, most definitely. So I've got to fill in this front bit here. Um, I'm using today um, the single needle, which is a coarse needle here, just our standard coarse needle. I am also using um, the prim handle, which um, has got up to seven needles in there and comes with an extra single handle that you can use and load up with um, needles. This comes without the needle, so you have to fill it up yourself. I've also got my um, three needle tool, which I've actually only loaded up with two needles today, but I'm also using the clover tool um, that has got the three needles in. So these tools come with needles. This is what I'm using today. And I'm also using my brush mat and um, the seven needle felting tool that comes with seven fine needles. That's a useful one to have. Um, and I'm also using the um, the new, sorry, Alicia, you've got to type all of this out, or Hannah on Thursday. I'm also using our new um, eco um, wool mat, which is um, a, ni a nice new size, works perfect for landscape pictures, and it does work with a seven needle felting tool. It um, the, the tool sinks um, easily into the fiber, so that's a good one to use as well. So, and of course, I don't need to mention that anymore, but I'm using the A4 earth mat here, which also comes in A5, A6, and in larger sizes. So, great, great um, um, base to needle felt onto. So, I've got a whole mix there. You don't need all of it, but that's what I'm using um, at different times today. So, I'm going to fill in this front part here, and I'm going to make that nice and um, light. Um, I've got some of that neon green. I, I don't know why, but I'm very attracted to that neon green at the moment. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. You don't have to use that. This is just something that I'm suggesting. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of yellow in there because um, I want to sort of offset it a little bit from, oh, maybe not neon yellow. Um, let's not make it too bright. This is the yellow shimmer. It's a lovely um, muted yellow with a bit of shine in it, like it has got a, a, an, um, a synthetic fiber running through it. And I'm going to mix all three of these. Mixing wool, as I've explained last time, is really easy, especially when you're making a landscape picture because you don't want it to be an even mix. You want it to be sort of mottled and see when you when you needle felt this down, what, um, how, what you sort of can spot um, that emerges out of all of this. So this is quite a nice sort of light mix, slightly yellow. And um, I'm going to um, start stubbing this into um, my mat here, into the, into the felt sheet, just fastening it on. When you're creating the background, it's really great to work with um, the, the uh, multi-tools because you can get this down really quickly. As I've said before, I have left some gaps here. I might fill them in yet, but they might sort of just naturally um, turn into um, some, I don't know, some sort of feature that I don't I haven't thought about yet. I'm going to make another mix with a lichen green, which is the mountain sheep and the gold shimmer again, just to have it less vibrant. And the way that I'm putting this on often is literally as if you are painting this. So I'm putting this on, um, holding onto one edge of that little batch of wool that I've got. It Little is, is always more with needle felting. So don't pile it on because your needle has to fight its way through it and stab it out through the other side, which is what happens here. So you can see the fibers are coming out. You can tell where I've worked it over with a, with a multi um, tool. I'll just show you what happens when you do that. So I'm going to use the brush mat 
use my felting um, seven needle felting tool and stab that in. I know there have been uh, people asking questions about if you want to add details like a house and so on. This is what I'm going to show you today. So um, there's a little trick where we use water soluble paper, but it does work for other things as well. So I'm, I'm going to show you all of that today. And then next week um, we'll finish the picture off. If you, um, I'm, I'm giving you lots and lots of help to add detail, but you might not want to add all of that detail in, into the same picture. So my picture is going to be very busy. So you can see just putting um, that, that, with, um, that through with that multi-tool, um, you can tell this is just with a single needle and there I've used the multi-tool. It will get a lot busier on the back as you um, add other fibers onto the top. So I think my common theme, I'm going to stick with that yellow and I'm just going to add different types of greens into it to um, make the foreground look more varied and and um, um, sort of add the different 3D-ness into it. That's my needle there. Very satisfying crunching feeling and sound. If you've never needle felt it before, this is probably one of the best sounds on the planet once you get into it. It, um, it stands for, um, I don't know, just bringing a bit of calm and um, loveliness back into your life. I'm going to add a bit of light green into this. Uh, sorry, light yellow I meant to say. So I'm, I'm pretty much using all the colours. I've got um, sort of sitting around little snippets. It's a great way of using up scraps of wool and um, not just wool, but any sort of any other fibres you may have that um, you can mix in with wool and um, and felt them down. It is really really a great way of um, of getting getting rid of scraps and bits and pieces, especially if you're sort of designing um, a random landscape. I'll put a bit of I'm just deciding what to put in there I'm, I'm I'm doing it in the moment so it's all it's all happening as um it's really interesting because if you add a little bit of um, even if you add a little bit of red in into there now which I've done just here it it um it it something emerges in front of your eyes where you're not where you think oh what I hadn't sort of planned on this but it looks like um tiny little red flowers have sort of just um are sitting there in a clump I, I just absolutely love that um that kind of stuff happening when you flat needle felting just to remind everybody you've got to lift this off your mat um, otherwise if you don't do this regular enough it gets fastened to it and also I've actually I'm going to use the back of this as I did last time oh this is quite messy now I'm just going to clean that quickly with our magic brush um, I'm, I'm, I'm not only cleaning it because it doesn't look very nice it doesn't actually affect the um, the felting uh, process so get this out of there these um these are probably the best brushes that we have uh, we've tried um several and they all work but this one is probably the one that picks up the most and um we've got another one which um I do like as well I don't know where that is hiding it's hiding at the moment so you can um obviously clean your mat more often and avoid any sort of severe um uh, fiber contamination but um, I'm, I, a lot of people actually don't mind them being there so there you go that's a little bit better let's try this side um, it does work with flat with 2d needle felting it gives sort of um, it's a little bit a little bit um, more of a how can I say the way let's just try one and then the other yeah this one is a bit softer and this one feels a bit crisper it's not, it's not a huge amount of difference, but I'm just going by what Danny Ives um, has recommended, quite a, a very, very um, amazing 2D needle felter, and she prefers using the slightly harder um, back of, of the, um, of the mat, earth mat set. Um, and of course, just to remind everybody, we have um, changed over to wool mats um, to save... Um, putting foam mats into the rubbish. The foam mats cannot be recy uh, recycled. They literally end in um, in a landfill site um, and they um, it will just take ages for them to um, be not 
like sitting there anymore. It is definitely um, a 100% plastic product. So we're really proud that also our kits now have got the eco wool, wool mats in them. And, um, and yeah, we're sort of leading the way. Hopefully lots and lots of people will follow by uh, not having the foam mats uh, anymore because we feel that we've all got a responsibility to look after our environment. So let's, let's declare war on the foam. No more foam. Um, right. This is um, taking shape. I'm adding random green colors into here. Um, so one of the suggestions that I will make is when you um, have a landscape picture, just sometimes you've got to look away and then look at it again. So I'm actually now looking at this and I'm not entirely sure about all this yellow there. It just looks a little bit to me, it looks a little bit wrong. So I'm going to add more green into it. And it is when sometimes you have to look away and look at it again to get the big picture. Otherwise, you, you see something is wrong, but you can't actually quite work out what it is. So I'm going to um, take, take that sort of vibrant yellow off. And I'm hoping that that will make a difference. There. Um, you can make um, pictures with a different perspective. So obviously this one is where um, I'm standing pretty much here and I'm looking um, down into the distance. Um, but you can have pictures where you're looking from the side and it's and and um, so it's not a, um, a totally front on view. It's more from the side. I think I'm going to use this to put a field of poppies onto it so that that um, so the poppies will be quite large in comparison to the background. So I think that's what I'm going to do on this little hump here. So it's going to be um, the, the main the main um, focus of this particular picture will be this this front part here that's going to be um, a, a poppy field. That's what I'm planning to do. And um, that looks a little bit better. So I will now decide if I'm going to have um, um, a lake or a stream or whatever running through there. And um, just looking, maybe this could be a little, like a little pond or a little lake with the water running. It's best to look at it in the, in the, it looks, it, at the moment it looks like this is all really wet because of the blue shining through. So I'm going to contain that a little bit by making a surround. Um, so first of all, where, it, where it's wet, the grass is nice and green and uh, probably a little bit darker. So that, that, um, let's, let's put a surround on here onto that sort of what looks like it could be um, a lake. So it's a little bit darker here. I'm just going to um, let you catch up if you're still filling in your background or if you're deciding if you have sort of a wet area in your picture. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be um, something like that. So, And then I'm going to check in on the comments and, um, and tell you um, a few other bits as well. Right. So um, let's have a look what uh, people are saying over oh, the numbers of viewers has come up now. Remember to give us the thumbs up. Everybody needs to just, um, if you're on your mobile phone, I think it's slightly more complicated to do that. But um, still, try your best. Give us the thumbs up. We, we ha we're going up in numbers with our um, subscribers. And the more people give us the thumbs up, the more um, it gets put out there on YouTube. And people might find us by random, which is amazing. So um, let's have a look. Okay, there's some, definitely something um, going on that I'm getting. Um... Okay, there's a lot of conversation going on about stuff that has got nothing to do with my landscape. So I'm going to just skip that now. Um, and talk about needles. I can talk about needles. I'll tell you what my favorites are in a minute. Um, is anybody? Okay, here we go. Um, Um, I would love to meet my dogs because I miss them so much and we could go for a walk, um, lovely walk together. Oh no, Angie, where are your dogs? Why, why are they not with you? I just got, um, oh, Catherine has only just uh, joined. Um, okay. You're going to have to, um, tell us 
um, what, who you would like to see. If I was walking in a beautiful landscape, I'd like to bump into my father as he's been gone for almost 10 years. He has a funny sense of humor. So we've had, we, we'd have a good laugh and a hug. Miss you, Kevin. Oh, that's nice, Bridget. Um, anybody else? Um, Donna says, if I, if walking in a beautiful landscape, I would like to bump into my two sons and have a lovely chat with them. So long since seeing them. Oh, I know so many people who haven't, um, been able to see their loved ones for such a long time. I, I had all plans to go to Germany last year and I haven't been for ages. And, um, yeah, that was put on hold. Um, and I, it's not going to happen this year either. I'm not going over there. So I've got to wait a little bit longer. In the meantime, I was going to visit my grandmother last year, but unfortunately she um she died from from old age before um before I had a chance to see her and that was had nothing to do with coronavirus. It was just that I um I didn't um yeah, I wasn't I was never going to make it until the summer anyway and um she sadly passed away around about this time last year at the proud age of 94. She always said she she was the same age as um as the queen. So um yeah, she would have been 95 what, but now she her birthday was in in February. So I always know how old the queen is because I always knew how old my grandmother was. That's quite, um useful to know. And um I would love to bump into Steffi and Sophie. I'm the um I, um, and the wonderful treasure chest of a studio they would never get rid of me <laughs> oh thank you um trisha that's a nice thing to say i actually had a uh, contact with sophie just earlier she's uh, on her way to um to see um her baby's granddad so that's nice with her partner so um usually i'd want to bump into animals dur during nature walks says jude I love seeing foxes, bird watching, and many more interesting lesser than seen animals. It's so much fun. I'm totally with you on this, Jude. I get so excited when I spot an animal and um, it's always nice to see something that maybe you don't see every day. Absolutely, totally with you. Thank you for um, leaving these comments. Let's talk about needles. So for the landscape, I'm, I am literally just using a very boring, triangular, standard, coarse needle. It really does work very well. I think that the um, all of these specialist needles, like the twisted needles and the cross star needles, they're, they're, they almost feel um, like they could be more useful for 3D sculpting. For the landscape one, I, I really, at this stage, I think just an ordinary um, coarse needle does the trick. And then have your multi-tools, which I think is a, a really good investment to speed things down. Um, so that's where what I'm focusing on at the moment. But I'm not. You might have a different view because the use of needles is very personal. So you, you might have a completely different um, um, opinion about which felting needle works for you. Right. Let's go back to the. Um, oh, let's know that. Let's do something else. So as you know, we've celebrated recently our first year of a complete subscription box of fairies. Twelve months of fairies. Now um, we started that last year. Um, in I think April was our first month so we're bo on box 13 with a daisy fairy which lots of you have made and she ho she has a little secret of a flower underneath and um, loving to see all the all the makes but people have asked us who have who've missed the first boxes whether they could just buy the instructions the good news is they're now available and so this is um, this is what um, what you can now get um, in terms of um, catching up with all your fairies. So starting from the left hand side up in the top, that was our first fairy, the spring fairy. Then we had the uh, pansy flower fairy. The forget-me-not fairy is um, one of our fairies we're keeping in stock at all times. So you can actually uh, buy the whole box with all the um, stuff inside. Our wild rose fairy was one of my favorites because of that really bright, bright pink. Um, then the sunflower fairy, the autumn sprite, the poppy fairy, um, we've had our um, winter fairy, um, we've had our snowdrop fairy and our love fairy, the red one. I'm going from left to right and then starting um, at the left again. So I'm in the third row now and then the amethyst fairy in February, which will stay one of our staples. So the love fairy and the amethyst fairy will stay in our repertoire and the rainbow fairy as well, which was last month. So if you've missed out on any of those and you want to make them yourself, then you can do that. We are also um, this week, hopefully, um, putting together some fairy... Um, 
accessory packs. So some of you have asked, oh, I want to make a fairy, but I don't know where to get the little bits of decorations from. So we're going to put together a, a limited um, a number of, of fairy um decoration packs they 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 include flowers and materials for making wings so it's a whole sort of random um selection and um hopefully that we get that um posted um onto our web shop by the end of this week but i'm not making any promises because we're very busy right let's get back to our landscape picture so i've needle felted sort of the surround of a um of a, a lake there and now i'm going to do something very similar um at the back but I'm keeping that line a little bit softer so it's it's more spread out as if um why am I doing this I don't really know why I'm doing this it just feels right you can do a straight a straight line um if you want to and um I'm also going to emphasize this sort of uh, water in there by by actually adding a little bit of um of color more color in there there we go and am i letting water come down there i could do let's see what that looks like just building the path here it doesn't have to be a straight line because water disappears under the earth as well so it could be and it could be several um streams coming down so just creating this definitely looks like a, um, um, a lake up in the mountains, doesn't it? So I'm going to um, make that more um, obvious there as well. There you go. That's quite a big, deep lake there. Very visible. And this one is more overgrown down here. So you can um, add details to it. Um, in different colorways. So at the moment, I've been mainly using the dark color, the dark green, which is um, what we call our forest green. And then you can sort of add details into this. But if you don't like it, you can always take it off again. If it's not working for you, just take it off. Um, so that's the beauty about needle felting, this kind of detail. Now, before I add too much detail into there, I want to place a house somewhere. So um, let's say I have a house. I could actually have a house if I put a if I put a small house here. That means my poppies are going to be small as well. Um, if I if I keep this as the most forward hill, I could make larger poppies here. But then the house will be out of proportion. So you have to kind of work within proportion. And um, so let's let's do the house bit first. So what I have done is I have printed off. From this is these are Google Images, um, a couple of of houses like old old so very um, standard houses. If you, um, I'm obviously I'm not making any money out of any of this, so I'm um, I'm using it as a very very rough template. But if you are wanting to make pictures to sell, then do take your own pictures. There's lots of opportunities opportunities to take photographs or choose photos um, from the web that haven't got copyright impinged on it and what you um what is great about using um sort of images is that you can use your water soluble paper just to remind you this is water soluble paper that um um is great to draw on you can felt onto it and um you don't even have to dissolve it with water um, um i'm just gonna i think I'm not going to use this house or that house. This is sort of kind of the decision you're going to have to make. But I think looking at my picture now, probably I'm going to put a house here because that would be in proportion with um, the lake. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the house by the lake. Um, and all of these are really old, um, old houses, but you don't have to make them exactly. It's more about the square shape. So you've got a more structural um um, thing um, structural base here and I'm going to use this one because it, you can see it better when I draw on it and um, so the next thing you're going to do is you have to just draw the outline we're only interested in the in the structural construct of this house because um, that is what's going to be what will be hard to needle felt onto there um, so I'm just drawing the outline of the house there the whole house and all the um, sort of important lines like the edge of the roof and um, that's all I need at the moment 
So that's it. That's basically what I'm drawing. And then I can take this off. So it's you don't even have to use like a proper photo as long as you've got the outline of a house. And then what I'm going to do is I've got to cut this now. Um, I need to cut this out with scissors. I'm going to cut the outline of this now. Because I don't want all these extra bits of water soluble paper. It's not necessary. So it, there's no point drawing a, a door or anything like that on there because all you will do is you're just going to felt. You're just using this as a template directly onto your um, picture. And I'm going to place it here. There. That's where I'm going to place the house. That seems to be in proportion. There's sort of, you know, I mean, that could, I could even use that as a footpath, but I'm going to stick with it being um, a lake. This is all very fluid, especially when you're designing your own. You might not necessarily have all the answers. Now, when you've got a quite a small um, constructions as I have here, what does actually work is, is just to put a few lines in there first and that felts it on already as well. So I'm going to put um, a black line here for the roof. And um, I'm going to put another line here. You, that doesn't have to be black. It can be a darker color. Just anything that will sort of help you to to remember the lines that are running through there, especially when it's um, um, a small house like this one. If you have a really big one, then you can probably fill it in first. So this is sort of the roof line. And I'm going to just add that line here in as well. These don't have to stay these lines. This is now just fastened, fastened the house on, and now you need to decide on the colors. Um, if you want to, it to be a wooden house, then obviously you'll use wood colors. If you want it to be a house, then keep it white. But even just putting it on like that, that has already added an amazing um, addition to the house. And um, what I love, um, you could have a, like a red roof or a gray roof, or um, it's this is now where you've got to design your own your own um, house. Um, I'm going to use sort of a dark, a darker, this is the variegated red that we have got. I like that on here. That looks nice with other, other colors. So I'm following the outline of this house. So you don't, you want to be precise because the house needs to have crisp, crisp ed edges. It doesn't, you don't want it to be a wishy-washy house because um, it's sitting there and you, you can see it very clearly in the distance. And it is a, it is a construct like a, um, um, a construct, what do you call it? I don't know, my words are failing me. Um, uh, construction, that's it. It's a, it's a building basically, so it does have to have, it's not a, a tree with, um, with leaves swaying. It is a, a solid building, so it needs to look solid as well. So you do want to have very, very precise lines and edges and, um, and, and felt that on there. Remember, you have to lift off your um, mat now and then. So I've added the roof onto it. And next, oh, I hope you don't hear that noise, but there are builders outside and they, um, I've told them to turn the radio off because I didn't want you to listen to Radio 1 um, while I was doing this, but now they're actually cutting something brilliant. Anyway, if you can hear this, I do apologize. Just, just ignore it if you can. And then I'm going to, um, what works, what looks really nice. I mean, you can also uh, sometimes just lay it on and have a look if you like the look of that. This, by the way, is our um, dyed New Zealand merino that I'm using here now, which is the mushroom, the, um, the, the color that we call mushroom. And I'm just gonna put that on there and see what happens. Yeah, that looks okay, so I'm gonna stick with that. Fill that in. Um, at the moment, the house looks as if it's plonked right into the middle of your picture. That doesn't have, we, I'm going to build, um, you know, a forefront um, around it in a minute. I'm using very, very small amounts, just felting it down with my coarse needle. And I'm going to lift this off again because it's definitely um, getting a lot of concentrated stabs here. You might have to um, re-establish sort of um, any outlines, you know, where, where we put where I put the black. You might have to establish that again if you want to, or it might also just look nice that it's sort of dis disappearing a little bit in in your picture. And then um, you can do that part of the house in a different color, um, mostly because it's probably 
um, in a, you know, the light shines on it in a different way so you can reflect this. So what I'm actually, let's just see, I'm just going to put this on to see if it looks right. Um, yeah, I think we can get away with that. Let's use that. I might just use that and mix it with my mushroom. So I've got the fox rust brown here. I'm going to mix that with my mushroom. Um, I really, ideally, I wanted to use the hair brown, but I haven't, I don't seem to have any hair brown here. But this will do. That's almost a hair brown now. I'm going to put that as the front of the house. So it's quite a precise... Um, needle felting whereas before you've just been quite free with the shapes and the flow let the flow of the picture take shape um, you can use this also for animals if you want to place it maybe you want to place a big stack um, I think this is probably the smallest I would use it for if you go any smaller it's the, the you're just going to push the water soluble paper straight into your picture and it will go through it so pull this off so I want to put like um um I don't know what the proper, what is that? Is it called a plinth or something going on the side of the roof? So I'm going to put a little bit more. You can use a dark brown, but I'm sticking with my black. Put that on the side. Make that roof a little bit more distinct. There. And um, one of the interesting things is that um, if you're putting windows into your um, house, what people often think is that you have that you have to put um, if you look at a house in daylight and there's no light inside it's because it's daylight the windows are actually they're they're not usually white P people often think they have to be white but they're not actually white they're usually black or gray so if you're putting a window in there what I would do is start with a, um, a f um, well you can put I'm going to put a a brown frame around because it's so tiny I'm actually going to start with the window itself so I'm I'm going to use a dark color Ooh, it needs to be darker than that um, I'm using a dark brown here and I'm make I'm putting one window here and um, I'm felting this down it could also you could also use a dark gray or um, um, yeah any sort of dark color putting that here now and then you put a, um, and then after that you can put a frame around it. So I'm going to put um, you don't have to put a frame around it, but you can. I'm gonna stick with my black. This is a lot of this is already like a lot of detail going into here right now, um, because the house is quite an important sense, uh, part of the picture. So I want it down because um, there might be things going on in front of it. So I can't put it on later. Um, and I'm going to put a door into the into this part here. So with a door, you um, you could go with a colorful door. Um, maybe I'm going to put um, a green door in there. How about that? Let's put a green door in there. Maybe not the same green um, that you've used for. Um, let's use that. I'm using that olive green, the Australian merino olive green. Again, I'm just making I'm making it a round door, so it's got a round. Um, top Pelt that down so if when you put things in like that you may have to put a surround on it so just so that it um, keep looking at your picture through the camera or take a photo you could even stand in front of a mirror and um, and look at it so there is a door in there but it's not very distinct so I'm going to uh, put um, a dark frame around it um, but I don't mean a frame well it is a frame I suppose because the doors have to have frames as well and I'm going to put that around it just to bring make the door more visible I'm stabbing that in a lot because I don't want it to be overpowering I wanted to just make the door come out a bit more rather than Highlighting that there is a um, um, a frame around it that needs to be really thin and disappearing into the background. Right, so now I have got my house. If you um, have a, a bigger scale house, you can um, sort of maybe uh, put lines in for the for the wood planks if the house is made from wood. Um, 
and then we need to um, place it now into the picture so at the moment it's quite a colorful house you can give it a chimney still that's um, something you can do afterwards you can build onto it if you want but you've got your base there of the house in the middle of um, of that little valley there by the lake below the mountain and um, and now you can you need to do something here on the base because it's obviously that the house is not just put on um, on top of it and I'm going to put a bit of gray here because that I've sort of imagined that perhaps they're not they have some um, maybe a more civilized um, front drive or well, it's maybe not a drive because I can't see that there's going to be cars going there but it's just something to offset from the rest of the picture so I'm, I'm using um, the um, Scotland grey you don't have to use grey you can use other colors or you can give put green in front of it because that might look as if um, it's it's all it's maybe it's an old um, house that is run down and nobody lives there anymore so you can um, just put something there so it, the house looks like it's part of the picture rather than just placed on top so that's um, that's the house in there now now this is now basically determined whatever else happens around it. You're not going to put a ginormous sheep here in the field because then the house becomes a toy house. Um, so so if, you, um, if you put sheep in this field, they have to be in proportion to the house. So you have to sort of remember, does a sheep fit through the front of a door? Um, yes, it does. So it needs to be probably so halfway, if that at all, um, up the front door so you're you're kind of having to use your common sense and your experience of proportions from real life now to add something else into it this is why I considered earlier if I'm putting the house on here then everything else in the background would be super tiny so I'm now left myself open that this can still be big because it depends how far forward it is by whatever I'm putting on there now puts the rest into the proportion as well. But as the house is there, anything surrounding that house goes by that. So if you're putting sheep in the background, they're literally just tiny dots. If you put them here, they're a little bit bigger. You, If you put them here, they might be a lot bigger. Now, somebody asked, what do you do about um, these stab marks? We get this asked a lot. I don't actually mind them at all. I think they're just especially when you're um, needle felting a, a 2d picture they they sort of become part of don't look you know this is this is the typical thing where you're focusing on so much on a detail just look away um imagine that that picture is going to be further away than um you're looking at it when you're working on it so um i think once once you look at the big picture you do not see those stub marks anymore especially when you're needle felting a landscape picture um the only thing if it really really bothers you then you have to use a tiny a very fine needle to get rid of them so that is one way um, of getting rid of them right i'm gonna have a quick check-in um how uh Oh, that's good feedback, actually. Please do more mix, do more mixed bags of everything I'm starting out and since I'm learning and don't always have particular projects in mind would be great for building up my materials. So we already do quite a lot of mixed bags, but um, there's always scope for more, of course. We we do, namely, we do um, a bird mix, which is great for blue tits, robins and, um, and wrens. However, if... You don't have to make birds from it. If you think, oh, this this has got a really great mix of colors in it. I mean, a lot of it is white uh, because you're making the bird from white and then you build um, the colors around it. So um, it doesn't have to be just for, for birds, but this is what we call our bird mix. We've got a woodland mix, which is great for foxes, badgers, um, otters and hares. So it's um it's quite a... Um, um, there's there's the fox rust brown in um actually there isn't there's the fox red variegated in there and uh, gray and black and white for the badger and then there's uh, browns in there as well for hares and otters and uh, then we have got our spiced um, mix which is all the variegated colors so including this variegated green so they they have um, a, a black fiber running through it but it makes and and it's the the roof color that I've used on the house which is the red we it's an color there is a um there's all the different fox reds in there as well so it's a really nice mix for um we call it spiced mix because at christmas um it looks amazing making uh, baubles and decorating them 
Um, we've also got our pebble mix, which has got lots of grays and browns and um, black and white in there. So it's a really good base mix for anything sort of uh, mineral or earthy. Then we have got our cappuccino mix and that's got exactly the colors for, for um, of cappuccino with lighter browns and, um, and warm, rich colors. And then we've got our mocha mix, which is um, the darker version of it all. It's quite dark with dark browns and, um, and, yeah, not 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 so warm the colors. Um, what else have we got? We have got our eight color uh, rainbow and our fifteen color rainbow. So lots of uh, bright colors there. They're, these are all um, New Zealand merino and mountain sheep um, wool buds. What else have we got? Um, we we do our um, our dragon mix, which in itself has got so much variety of colors in it. So you can pick bits and pieces out, and then of course we do the fairy mix, which is what's up for grabs to win today and that also comes with lots of surprises so it's a slightly it's a slightly more pink bluey um dreamy mix so not so earthy and 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 rustic um we have seasonal mixes as well like our easter mix which we're phasing out now and um i'm sure i'm missing some of the mixes but uh, oh yeah our landscape mix which we um was the was our price last week so that has all blues and greens and white in it so perfect for skies and and backgrounds um yes can't think oh i tell you another one that's a really good one to have if you haven't got it yet is the natural dye multicolor one um i think i might have pointed that out the other day i haven't actually got a continuous um bit of it here i've sort of split all the colors out but it is it they're really they're lovely muted colors they're great for landscape pictures and you get um an, a mother orange in there you get um a, a a yellow a green a blue and a purple and um they are they're really nice colors really nice and muted colors to to work on a landscape right let's um hope that answers the question um about the the stubby stubby marks um and if you're if i'm talking about a fine needle i could actually try it and see if i can um show it to you i haven't actually brought the fine needles here but i'm just gonna because i'm not using them um actually um but there was a lot of actually in that sentence um the finest needle we do is our 42 um, twisted. So let's have a look. So we've got the, the standard needles come in um, in coarse, medium and fine. And I think, let's just see. Yeah, it does actually, if you if you use the fine needle, which is the green one, it um, it sort of takes care of, of a lot of the stub marks. Um, I think a lot of some people might like to iron their work but i personally i don't like it because i like that 3dness that is still there by just needle felting it can you see there's actually lumps and bumps and bits and pieces still sticking out and it gets it gets even worse when you start adding more detail onto it that you want want to be there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put a tiny sheep here into um, that field and I'll show you how to make sheep. So to make sheep, you just need a little bit of white and a little bit of brown, especially if you're making them um, far away. That's the most common way of how you can um, recognize, oh, that's come off again, how you can recognize sheep. Um, I'm just looking for the Portuguese Merino. Oh, my colors got mixed up, oh, there it is. The, port 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 the shorter fibers that I'm using now, which is the Cape, the white is the Cape Merino. It's a really short, short fiber. It's perfect for making small details on a on a landscape picture. And this is the Portuguese Merino. It's also really short fiber. So to make um, a sheep now, remember it's got to be in proportion of this house now. I'm just going to make a, a, a tiny little dot. Um, for this, you might want to go to a smaller needle. And um, I've got to make it small enough so that it fits... Not that I'm going to invite it into the house, but it's got to be in proportion of, of that um, little house now. So I'm making a tiny, tiny little um, sheep here. And I'm putting a little bit of brown to one side. And that is all you need to do is because our brains now see this as a sheep. Use When you make it, it's a white blob and a brown blob. But as soon as you um, look away and look again, our brains will uh, see this as a sheep. And you can just see these lovely little cotton spots in the wool that I've used, the green um, rain, rainbow drops 
um, they look like little flowers and I, I really like that so you don't even have to needle felt flowers so you can make another sheep and I'm going to make some in the foreground as well so that we we can see the difference um, of, of how they're made as well another sheep you can make them so that they are facing you just make another white blob this one is a little bit rounder and then this is where detail work um, if you if you if you love detail you love this and then just put a little bit of brown right um, sort of in the upper part of it and because it's so small you don't even need to add any um, ears or anything like that into it and that is recognized as a sheep that's looking at you that's all you need to do to make a sheep now what I often um, do and what I say is that whenever you're placing something into a picture just make sure that you're just putting something underneath it to sort of um I'm trying to find the right color that will to 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 sort of it could even overlap a little bit just so that it doesn't look like you've you've placed it on on top of it even if you're just stabbing into um, underneath it that um, and that makes an indentation which which will make it darker looking even if you just do that that's already um better than just putting them on top and leaving them there i appreciate this is quite a minute um scale here so i'm going to make a big sheep i'm going to put it here okay so this is quite in the foreground and i'm making um, a larger sheep here to just show you what i've just done so you use i'm still using the cape merino if if for whatever reason you're doing this and it looks wrong then you can pull it off so i'm i'm making a sheep here that's looking at us so I've shown you to make the sheep in scale with whatever you have put in there. It, a lot of it is common sense. You just need to um, you just need to think for a minute. And if you put a ginormous sheep in here, it makes that house look like a toy house. So I'm just putting um, a round blob here. You notice that I'm felting on the outside because I want the the 3Dness of the wool to stay in place. I don't want this to be flat. So I'm no longer now using my my um, um, super fast seven needle felting tool and then I'm putting uh, a brown face a brown head onto it and when you're felting this um, a little bit bigger you could aim for sort of a rough triangle so um, the sides are the ears it's quite a fat sheep there Got lots of wool like that so I'm felting this on quite gently because I don't want it to to become a, um, a hole so it's 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 sort of there but 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 not felt it on so it because it has become made an indentation and then you can give it legs if you want you don't need to give it four legs because you can sort of assume that two of the legs are you could give it three legs not that I'm saying it's a three-legged sheep but it's just that the, you might not see all the legs because they're sort of behind um, behind the sheep behind the other legs there you go so you've made um, a sheep standing there and again like I said give it a little bit of texture now I'm going to use some of these green Leicester curls because that looks really nice as a as an extra bit of um, 3d-ness that you can add into the picture because it it adds color and and perspective into it so I've just um, added a little bit of um, green in there so you've got your tiny sheep here in the background got a big fat sheep here in the foreground and you can do that again now you you get a sense of proportion you can see how far back this is because your sheep here in the foreground is um, relatively big in comparison and um, you can of course continue with the sheep theme here so if I make another one that's um, looking um, to the side take your nice fluffy cape merino love this wool for it's great for um for sheep clouds and snow that's the that's probably the most i um i have used it for make another sheep here and just stabbing it a little bit i am currently using the fine needle so i'm i'm actually going for a fine needle for this now and then a little bit of the brown portuguese merino and the sheep is looking to the side so i'm giving it i'm shaping the head as i'm stabbing it on going in to the side there 
no eyes, no mouth, no details required. Um, you can, again, you can um, give it legs. This time you might want to give it four legs because they might all be visible. Lily put green legs on that sheep. Right, let's put legs on that sheep. Sometimes sheep have got tiny, tiny little legs on because their wool is so... Well, there's so many breeds of sheep as well. But um, some sheep have got tiny, short little legs. And um, so it all depends... Um, how much wool they're carrying. Sometimes their legs look longer because they've just been shorn. And um, we're not adding that kind of... These, these are indistinct breeds, okay? I have no idea what breed they are, but they are um, with brown heads and and um, brown legs. That's the kind of sheep they are, whatever that is. There you go. So it's got it's got its legs there. Um, you could even put a tiny bit of wool over the top again because all the legs all all of the legs look like they've been um like they're um stuck to the side of the sheep so i'm going to hide them a little bit so the curls that i'm using on the landscape are the uh, lester curls we have got them in four different colors absolutely love these they're perfect for um um for landscape pictures i've only got well, we have them in, in natural color as well, but we have the green, which is, they're sort of really messy curls, but they're great for landscape pictures. And then you sometimes you get sort of batches in that. I've got really tiny little curls in there. Got them in yellow, in red, and we've got them in purple. I didn't bring the purple because um, I didn't, well, I don't think I've got any here. You can, of course, um, if you're using purple in, in, in your picture, then it looks like a lavender field. Um, absolutely love that. So you can put purple into your into your landscape. If you put yellow into it, it looks like rape. If you put a red into it, it looks like um, poppies. Um, so, or maybe if you put, um, um, you could put yellow in there with a little bit of brown and on long stalks and then it looks like sunflower fields we i've seen amazing sunflower fields last year this is this is all the sort of stuff that i'm planning out now in my picture if you if you're not following a particular script then this is something that you can plan out now so i want to uh, build a fence um to keep the sheep in place and i'm going to put that here at the back um, I'm again I'm using my Portuguese merino it's one of the great wools that um, works really well and for this I'm um, I, you can now think what was there first if if you imagine if you build a fence you're going to put the posts in first because otherwise you can't fasten the side slats to it so you could put the foot posts in first now when you build a fence you have to go with a, a landscape so it 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 is slightly everything's round everything's curved so the posts will be straight but your um the the way that the land lies will be curved so so you have to build have them um imagine that they're in different um on different heights because the 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 curved landscape um it reflects the curved landscape that's what I'm trying to say so it, it it what I what I always say is you always imagine what was there first. It's this is, is sort of a golden rule. Um, you're not gonna put the fence up um, before you've built before you've got um, a field to put it in, and um, and that, that's sort of a golden rule about landscapes is that make sure you've got your background there there first because you can't have a field in a sheep if um, a sheep in a field if there's no field right. So it's the apply common sense and logic. That's how I always think about landscapes. I'm sure there are lots of other theories around, but that's how I do it. And um, and if you find other ways, then they're probably just as good. There is no right or wrong. I, I'm a great believer there's no craft police, certainly no needle felting police. So you can basically do what you like. And, um, and if you found a great uh, way of doing something, do share it with us because we always love to hear um, new ideas. We we the makers we certainly don't know everything we don't claim that we do and then you put the the posts once you've put the posts in you put the um the bars in again you can work bit by bit just um just in, like in real life just put put it in as as you've got the lengths available um so you have the posts are straight and the and the um the bars that are going in there have to re represent the um, the land 
the curving of the of the landscape so they have to um, they have to not be straight otherwise it just doesn't look right in proportion it just looks like you've put some sort of um, square like you want to play four squares or like you're doing an excel spreadsheet with um, a table in there so keep it nice and round go with um, it's all it everything always looks better if it's slightly wonky or round or that sort of thing even even if you put a house in even if that is slightly wonky or round it just looks like it's old and um, you know not everything has to be completely straight certainly not when you're doing a landscape and then you can put a second bar in there go under below keep your planks of wood as you're doing it and um, when I have um, finish this fence um, Alicia is going to draw a winner which will be um, in fact before I finish this fence Alicia is going to draw a winner go on Alicia you draw a winner for our today's competition and then um, next time we will fill in more of this landscape we'll be doing some trees and some flowers um, some birds in the sky and um, um, lots of other details that you might want to add into it. And um, once um, you've, you've got a fence in there, then you've got to put something where the fence posts, because they've been there probably for a while. So you could use some of your curly wool and just put some growth around the posts, um, because that's what happens, that grass grows around. There we go. Okay, we've got a winner today, and that is um, C. Chow. Um, I, um, I I think we know you already, um, but um, I can't rem I can't remember your um, proper name now. But could you please message us? Um, that goes for the Thursday winner as well, which will be announced by Hannah um, on our Thursday repeat on Facebook. Um, could you email us um, um, info at the makers? Um, co uk and just let us know that you have won today's prize in the um, YouTube um, live stream landscape picture part two and then we will get your details and post this wool mix out to you which um, um, yeah well done thank you very much for um, for watching and comment commenting everybody and I'm just finishing off this sort of um, this this grassy bit that's growing around the fence post. So that, that is what I've added in today. I mean, so far this looks quite nice. It looks quite, um, yeah, like everything looks right in proportion and we've got lots of space to fill all around there um, next Tuesday. So um, thank you so much for, for watching. Um, we have got, we've still got um, the um, Craftfulness Festival coming up on Saturday. Our, our slot is at 12 o'clock you the ticket is seven pound 99 you don't have to watch it live i know there's other stuff going on on saturday that you might find more important which i don't blame you um at all but if you have got time at 12 o'clock you can watch uh, for an hour and a half making this beautiful butterfly it's a technique um with the water soluble paper flat needle felting where the water soluble paper does get dissolved you can still buy your pack from um, the creative craft show directly and the um, the, the web address is shop.creativecraftshow.co.uk these um, you can get these butterfly packs which makes two butterflies and you get the picture frame with it as well um, and um, the workshop stays on this um, Facebook group that you will get access to for a few weeks after the event. So even if you can't watch it live or even if your pack doesn't arrive in time, you can still watch it afterwards. And um, other than that, I can only say that next um, live stream is, of course, the part. No, that's not it. Um, it's part three. Just imagine that part through two says part three part three sorry about that um so we have one more part to go for the landscape where we will be finishing it off and i just say goodbye now thank you very much for watching take care everybody and yes i'm wearing my daisy t-shirt um requested on popular demand and um i don't know why i didn't wear it when we did our daisy chain um but it's here still for the daisy fairy and of course remember you can watch 
um, the uh, videos still um, on live stream how to make your daisy chain. I've seen some amazing creations and how they've been used in wreaths and um, decorating mantelpieces and all sorts of things. Let's bring spring into your house um, and um, and all everybody stay safe, take it easy and I will um, see you next week. Bye!